Okay, this is a lab we are going to practice. We have two tasks and uh, several review questions. And I think you are very familiar with the uh, flow of these uh, tasks. Read the source code, check its official website to find uh, the explanation, compare the code and run the code. Check the source code to see whether there are any to do's. If there are any to do's, just follow those to do's and uh, complete them. So now let's uh, create a folder. Lab 07. Again, we would like to download the course material. Right click, open the git bash, and git pull. Okay, there's a called companion website materials that are all here. So what I need to copy first I go to the labs, lab zero seven, check the code. So we need to copy uh, these things. The code and this uh, reference answers. Lab zero seven. We paste everything here. There are also Python program can be used to verify our real questions. So let's uh, also copy those uh, Python scripts we demonstrated during the lecture. Go to the lectures, module 03, memory allocation, the algorithm, Ctrl C, come back, paste here. You see inside the algorithm, we have three memory allocation algorithms we demonstrated during the lecture. The best fit, first fit, and the worst fit. So now let's uh, complete those two tasks first, task one and task two. Again, I would like to right click this uh, lab 07 open with a Visual Studio code. Then in the Win, the Windows API, we have two programs, share1.c and share2.c. Here you can go to its official website to find the explanation by yourself. Uh, how to compare it, how to run it, run share one first, then run share two. And uh, we can check to see whether there are any uh, to do's. Here you see there is no to do's here. So it just asks you to have a look about these programs. It's better check the official website to find the explanation. So you will do that by yourself and put the explanation in your lab report. Here this is a share tool. These two programs as we discussed during the lecture, the first one it create a memory map. Right? A memory map for a file and uh, the second program will access that are named uh, shared memory. So we can open uh, first let's open our Visual Studio command development. Here developer command prompt. Copy this folder. Okay, 
it looks like that bad fire is still running Oops, it's uh, weird today. My machine is uh, really slow. Here we can right click, press your sh shift key, right click, and open the PowerShell window here. Everything looks quite slow today. Okay, let's start it again. Okay, now it uh, show up. We compare those two programs. Okay, now we have two executable files. Share one dot exe and share two dot exe we can run share one dot exe here then run share two dot exe here and you see a message read from the shared memory by process two. Hello to process two. This message is uh, copied from process one. So this is just to demonstrate how do we do inter-process communication through memory mapped files. The share one still run here. You know, we run share to again right, that uh, named shared memory file is still there how about we uh, 
stop this job on Ctrl C stop it Okay, it's stopped. Now we run share tool again, and it says could not open file mapping objects. The reason is when file one stopped, it unmap the view file and close the handle. Okay, this is the first program. To get more information, please open the official website and read its explanation because you need to add an explanation about the program output into your lab report. Now for the next one, the C Shop. Compare it and run it here on Windows. Right. Again, you can go to its uh, official website to find its explanation. Here you see that uh, gc.cs copy uh, collector. In this program, we are to find uh, some information about the garbage collector. CSC to compare C Sharp program. Okay, you see that GC.exe is a uh, compiled. Now we run it. We will see uh, some output. Highest generation is two, generation zero, one, two, none. What are these generations? So please go to that official website to find the explanation. Here you may need to wait until see until it complete. When you check this program, and at the end, it, here it stops here console dot read. You need to press any key to exit this uh, program. For example, press under, then it stopped. You need to quit it. Oh, these other programs, they are quite simple. It just uh, asks you to have a look on their official website about their explanations. The major part are these uh, review questions, 60%. The first review question, given six memory partitions, here these are the sizes in, in this order from left to right. And how would the first fit, best fit, and worst fit algorithms place processes of these sizes in order? and find the total internal fragmentation and the total external fragmentation for each algorithm. Here are some hints. Internal fragmentation equals the memory partition minus the residing, the size of the residing processes and add them together. External fragmentation is the, is the summation of all those unusable memory partitions or unallocated memory partitions. So as we discussed during the lecture, each memory partition can hold no more than one process. But there are many online programs that demonstrate that each memory partition can hold more than one processes and put them continuously in that memory partition. That does not make sense. If so, as a counterexample, 
we don't uh, partition our memory, just take it as a whole. Then we can uh, allocate our processes continuously into our memory. Right? That's an, it's an unnecessary to partition our memory. So that's why I put more than one processes into a memory partition. Does not make sense. So in our lab and our test, we will assume each memory partition can only hold no more than one process. Okay, in this uh, this program, uh, this uh, review question, you are asked to use uh, what to create a table to show your procedure, how do you solve this problem, your allocation procedure. I demonstrate uh, during the class here. I will demonstrate uh, one of them. For others, you can do it by yourself. Here I just demonstrated the first fit. The first fit algorithm means you want to find a memory partition that satisfies the process. Take the first partition that satisfied this uh, process. For example, this is uh, one one file. You go through this uh, memory partition list. The first one is three hundred kilobytes. So you can allocate this uh, process into this uh, partition. The best fit, best fit. We need to find the the smallest partition that can hold this pro process. Right? You go through this uh, list, you will see this one is the smallest one that can hold this uh, process. So this is the best fit. Worst fit is just for a theoretical comparison. So you always find the largest one that can hold the process. So for example, this one, you go through this list, you will see the largest one is this one that can hold this process. So you need to do it uh, follow this order to allocate all these processes until you uh, complete all these uh, processes. But lots of situations maybe we cannot uh, allocate all of them because uh, based on those algorithms we cannot find uh, memory partition. So here, how many uh, partitions do we have? Six. Here we have five. Now we can uh, draw a table like this, as we demonstrated. Right? The row we put the memory blocks here in order 300, 600, 350, 200, 750, and uh, 125 because the units are all the same kilobyte. The row or the memory partitions, the column, we put the sizes of all these processes. Three, five, eight. Okay, these are the processes and these are the memory partitions. Here for the first fit. We need to follow this order. This one one file, you go through this uh, order, you find the first one that can hold this uh, process. So it will be allocated to this one, right? One one file. And as we discussed, it's better 
here we also split this cell and write the left uh, memory because we still have uh, 300 minus one file. This memory are uh, wasted and uh, this port are uh, called the internal fragmentation. Now the next one, 500, goes through this order because this uh, first one is used, so you, you only need to go through the rest of these memory blocks. Now you see this one, the first one that can hold it. So 500 here. And put 600 minus 500. Then the next one, again you go through those uh, left memory blocks. Here you will see this one can hold it. 358, 358, hold it here. And uh, the internal fragmentation minus 358. Okay, the next one. 200, you go through those unallocated uh, memory blocks. Find the first one here. Three hundred fifty minus two hundred. Now on the last one, three hundred seventy-five. You go through the left uh, memory blocks here. None of them can hold this one, so this one cannot be allocated. So you write a summary process 375 KP with this size, let's say. It's not allocated. And the internal fragmentation of this uh, internal fragmentation, right? You plus them together. How much is that? We can use Python to find the solution, or you can use your calculator. The external fragmentation of those unused memory blocks. So it's 200 plus 125 equals 325. And for this one, you use your Python here. Copy it, paste here. So it's uh, 827. 827. The unit is a kilobyte. Okay, now you can uh, check the check your solution at the end after you're done. You can check your solution with this uh, provided reference solution. Right, so the first fit internal fragmentation and external fragmentation. External fragmentation is this uh, column, 325 kilobytes, and the internal 
fragmentation 827 827 so for that best fit and worst fit you can do it for us this uh, procedure by yourself. You need to put this procedure inside your report. We still have one way to check the result. Here, use the Python algorithm as we demonstrated, demonstrated during the lecture. The Python, here you open it. When you open that uh, program, type 07 algorithm, the first fit FF, first fit. Open it. Now you can put the data here. Put your data memory block processes. So the memory blocks I think I need to put it uh, so you can do it by yourself for those students who didn't attend the lecture I just uh, demonstrated again 600 350, 200, 750, 125. Then the process is okay. Then you run it. Maybe you need to save it and run it. Ctrl S, save it and run it. Here you see the allocation. Again, I want to emphasize again the one memory block cannot hold more than one process. So we only use this, uh, this one. The second one, one memory block can hold more than one process. Don't use just a uh, for reference only. So now you see the result is, uh, is quite clear. External fragments, internal fragments, and three memory blocks here unallocated processes and which uh, processes, process is allocated to which memory block. The right side is the memory block, the left side is the process. Here for example this one one file is allocated to this uh, first uh, memory block, but it's indexed from zero. So you, here are the index indexes zero, one, four, two, zero, one, two, three, and so on. Okay, this how do you uh, verify your result with the provided Python program for that of best fit and uh, worst fit? You can do it by yourself. As we just discussed, first fit, you find the first memory block that can hold the process. The best fit, you will need to find the smallest memory block that can hold the process. The worst fit, you find the largest one that can hold your process. And we demonstrated uh, all these three situations during the lecture, so uh, we are not repeat here. Now review question two. Assuming uh, one kilobyte page size and what are the page numbers and offsets for the following address references provided as uh, decimal numbers. So we know the logical address equals the page number times the page size plus offset. And they are all integers based on the remainder theory we know this one is unique 
we can find the unique page number and offset. We use Python to do this job, right? Here, for example, the first uh, address, the first logical address. How do you find its page number and the offset? The page number is the quotient. So dividing this logical address, 3085, we use integer divide, integer division. Page size, 1 kilobyte is uh, 1024. We have learned this one in the first uh, lecture. So we get the page number is 3. And the offset is the remainder. 3085, the remainder of dividing 305 by 1024. In Python, you use this uh, percent symbol to find the remainder. 1024. So it's an offset, is a setting. Page number is 3. Again, you can verify your solution here. Page number offset. But in your report, you need to demonstrate this uh, calculation. We also need to write this uh, formula into your report. Right? How do you get the page number? How do you get the offset? Question three. So the net, this one you can do it by yourself. Right? I demonstrate this one. Now question three: Consider a, a paging system with the page table stored in memory. If a memory reference takes fifty nanoseconds, and how long does a paged memory reference take? Here's a hint. Access page table first to find the mapping entry. Then, based on the found mapping entry, access the memory again to get the memory. So, which means the memory need to be accessed twice. And each time we need 50 nanoseconds. Twice is uh, 100 nanoseconds. Right? These are Solution for the first one, 100 nanoseconds. Again, you can check yours against these uh, reference solutions. Now, the second question, if we add TLBs, we know TLB is a cache, right? Suppose 75% of all page table references are found in this TLB. And what's the effective memory reference time it has? And we assume that finding a page table entry in the TLB takes 2 nanoseconds if the entry is present. So now all the hints are provided. First, when you find the effective memory uh, reference time, it equals the page heat rate here, 75% in the TLB, this means the heat rate, and access time with TLB heat. If that item is in the TLB, then we we need to find the TLB 2 nanoseconds, then find it in the memory. It would be 2 plus 50, is 52. Right? This one is access time with the TLB heat is 52 nanoseconds. And the page miss rate the heat rate is uh, 75%, so the, mit rate, the miss rate is 1 minus 75%, is 25%. And the access time with TLB miss, when it's missed, first we access the TLB, we missed, right? Then we read the page table in the main memory, which means we access the memory once and get that entry in hardware that entry is also copied into this TLB then and that copying we think it uh, does not take time and uh, with this uh, found entry in the memory 
then we access the memory again is uh, we already know from this equation one so which means it needs uh, 100 nanoseconds plus this two nanoseconds it will be 102 nanoseconds for this uh, access time with TLB myth here right access with TLB hit is a TLB access time plus the memory access time here for the TLB miss first we access the TLB but we missed then we try to find the page entry through memory access and load it into TLB then we access the with the, the page entry we access the memory again to find it so with this formula you can uh, calculate quite easily the efficient memory ex reference time equals the page hit rate page hit rate is 75% right times the access time with TLB hit is uh, 52 nanoseconds as we just discussed and the page uh, miss rate times the access Access time with TLB miss is a 102 nanoseconds. So we will get 64.5 nanoseconds. 64.5 nanoseconds. Now, on question 4, consider the following segment table. Here we have five segments. Each segment, each segment has its uh, base address and length. Now we are asked to find the physical addresses for the following logical address. A uh, logical address is represented by a segmentation base, segment base and uh, offset here, a base and offset. So how do we uh, find the, here is a hint, logical address. Even the base plus the offset. And each uh, logical address, here the following logical address. The uh, logical address is represented by the segment segment number and, the, and its offset. So let's calculate the last one, right? First, based on this uh, segment, number 2 you find its base is 90 and here its offset is 500 so with this formula the 90 plus this 500 how, how many do we get? we get a 590 however its length is only 100 but here we have 500 which means it's outside of this uh, segment. This segment is from 90 base to its last address is 90 plus 100. It's uh, 190, but this is 500 is outside of that scope, which means we get a uh, access version here. Illegal logical address. For the other two, you can find by yourself, use the segmentation base plus the offset. For example, this one. Segment 3, its base is this number. And you see this offset is clearly less than this uh, length, which means it's missing this seg segment. So that's uh, eligible. That's legal, right? So you use this uh, base plus this 400. How much do you get? You use your calculator. One, three, two, seven, plus four hundred. You will get one seven two seven. Right, next one. One seven two seven. Well, this is uh, question four. For question five, the last uh, review question. Suppose in a computer system, 8 bits for logical address space with 4 bits for page number. Totally, we have uh, 
12 bits, right? 8 plus 4 is 12 bits for the address and uh, 4 bits for page offset and uh, 12 bits for physical address space here wait a minute, I made a mistake here 8 bits for the logical address space and this 8 bits is divided into two parts 4 bits for the page number and 4 bits for the page offset and for the physical address space we have 12 bits here and it's divided into uh, two parts 8 bits for frame number and 4 bits for frame offset So this is uh, not the usual case, it's just a toy example anyway. Give the page table here, this is the page table. If the page table is given like this, in this order, then the page table is actually like this, here. Your page number index from 0 to 15, right? 4 bits for the page number, which means it can only represent uh, 16 pages from 0 to 15 and these numbers are the frame numbers here frame numbers so you put in this order here when you are given a page table like this so it actually means this page table But in the test, uh, this, this, all these hints are not given, so you, you need to uh, take care of this by yourself. Now we have two sub-questions. First one, find the physical addresses for logical addresses 99, uh, 233. Uh, the second one, what's the logical address? Generate physical address. This one, three two six one. So for the first one, let's just uh, calculate this uh, ninety nine, the two hundred thirty six. You can do it by yourself. Now we can use the. Idea we got from this one, right? Question two. Given a logical address, you need to find the page number and offset. How do we find it? Here now I'm given this 99. We know. We need to know what's the page size. Here the page size you see. The four bits for page offset, which means the page size is two to the four. Two to the four is a sixteen. So the page size is uh, 16. Now, to get the page number, it's 99 integer division by 16. You get the page number 6, the so offset 99. You find the remainder by dividing this 99 by the page size 16. You get the offset three, so you get a page number and the offset. Here, pay attention. The frame offset is also four bits, which means the frame size is uh, identical to the page size. Each frame, each size is also sixteen. Here we didn't know whether the sixteen bytes was sixteen. By default, uh, we just choose a byte, 16 bytes. Now here, logical address, page number, right, these are the hints. You can find the page number and offset. Now, based on this page number, the page number is, uh, as we just calculated, the page number is uh, 6, for this is 99, here you find this 6, then you find the frame, the frame is uh, 111 
is a frame number. No, physical address equals the frame number times the frame size plus the offset. Here, these offsets they are the same. So you will uh, be able to find it. The frame number is one 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 times the frame size sixteen. Then plus the offset is a three, right? The offset is three. The offset in the page is identical to the offset in the frame. Now you get this uh, physical address is one seven seven nine for this uh, logical address ninety nine for the two. Yes, you can do it by yourself. Now the second question: What the logical address generates the physical address? Three two six one. We can use this formula to find the frame number and its offset. Then based on this frame number go through this list to find the page number right? you get that page number you also know the offset then you will be able to find this uh, logical address so that's the procedure you can do it by yourself once you are done you can always check the solution with the reference uh, solution here the reference solution Give you the logical address is 125. Now, oh, this uh, lab, I think uh, you can follow these hints, do it by yourself.